Senegalese President Basiru Diomaye has dissolved the opposition-led National Assembly and called for new legislative elections on November 17. The French news agency reports that government programs had been hampered by the lack of a majority in Parliament for Fahd's party. Senegalese political analyst Ibrahim Khan tells me that President Fahd has the constitutional right to dissolve the legislature. The president has the constitutional right to dissolve the parliament. And uh, because the majority at the parliament is not in his favor, he has argument to really try to get a parliament that accepts the agenda that he wants to put forward to resolve the Senegalese problem. But the one problem is that uh, last week, the president adopted a decree. And in that decree, he announced that the prime minister was going tomorrow to present at the parliament the policy that he wants his government to implement, and which is a constitutional obligation of the prime minister every time a new prime minister is uh, nominated. But now, with the decision to dissolve the parliament, that presentation cannot be made. At the same time, the president is also contradicting himself. Now he has scheduled, what, elections for November 17. So how likely that he will regain majority in parliament? Yes, but that's any decision to dissolve a parliament. Maybe he knows many things that we, you and me, don't know. But I have to say that the dissolution of the parliament happens in a period where the former ruling party is divided. The former prime minister just decided uh, the day before yesterday to create his new party. Other political parties and coalitions since uh, the presidential election are not really showing what they can do. The only thing that we can say is that uh, the Party Socialist, who was the, the first ruling party in the country in the 60s, And lastly, I'm not quite sure that the current presidential party is ready enough. It was uh, dissolved by uh, uh, Macky Sall. All the structures of the party were dismantled. And now that they came back in three months, now four months, is it a machine that is capable of uh, going into a campaign and uh, get the majority of MPs? It's a question mark so far. Ibrahim Khan is a Senegalese political analyst. He was speaking with us from the Senegalese capital, Dakar. The Union for Democracy and Social Progress, the party led by President Felix Tshisekedi, has been in power in the Democratic Republic of Congo, but it now faces internal turmoil. The bone of contention threatening to distract the president in efforts to stabilize the ship is the person of Secretary General Augustine Kabuya, whom some cadres and activists want to step down to pave the way for others to reorganize the party. A political crisis has been blowing for months and has now come to light. It began in January 2019 when Tshikedi, the party's chairman, at the time was required to hand over the reins when he became president of the country. Jama Kabunda and Kabuya were mandated to occupy an interim basis the posts of chairman and secretary general respectively. Over time, Kabund became an opponent of the Tshisekedi regime and was imprisoned while Kabuya remained on board with difference only to the president who can no longer make official decisions of the party. But Kabuya, the de facto boss, is more often than not deflecting attacks by some of his comrades who have chosen Dogracia Sibizibo to replace him. The party rebels accuse him of nepotism and mismanagement, and now the two camps are battling for control of the party. It was Eteni Longondo, a party executive and member of parliament, who took the lead in demanding a congress to reorganize the party. 
The war in the party is so vicious that even President Shekedi is struggling to bring calm. In public, the head of state hails it as democratic vitality of the party. But in private, he has tried so far in vain to calm the opposing sides. But he has vowed to remain Kabuya, uh, to retain Kabuya, the man he trusts. Observers say Kabuya owes his retention in office solely to this backing of the president. The president's mother, Mathe Kasaru, has had to step in to push for a truce as Bizibu's camp planned to forcibly take possession of the party headquarters. Since the death of the president's father, Etienne Tshekedi, on February 1st, 2017, the matriarch has become the most respected figure in the party. The highly influential Mama Mafe and the president have succeeded in temporarily keeping the party from imploding. UDPS was founded in 1982 and is emblematic of the fight against the dreaded former president Mobutu Sesiseko and Kabira's role in Dezile and Joseph. Mama Mathe has persuaded the two functions leaders to make peace, the common objective being to retain power. Mr. Kabuya has also addressed his opponents as my brothers. Let's keep power first. Mr. Kabuya said, the heirs of Etienne, a former opposition chief, fear the possibility of losing power in 2028 when the next general election is expected. The electoral battle in four years' time will be a major issue. Behind the scenes, preparations for the 2028 elections are already underway. Under the constitution, President Ishekedi should not stand again. He is serving his second and last term, but the UDPS wants to keep power.